Hi folks, so FFG have just dropped the TIE Striker article as normal. I'm going to quickly do a review of the pack and let you know my thoughts. So they've actually spoiled one of the generics and all three of the named pilots. There's six pilots in the pack. We've got the dial now. We've got a few of the upgrade cards and some uh, good stuff to talk about. Hopefully I'll not drone on for too long in this video, but let's get straight into it. So... The power skill 1 TIE Striker is the Imperial Trainee. It has 3 attacks, 2 agility, 4 hull, 0 shields, no options on the upgrade bar. It has a focus action, a barrel roll action and an evade action. And it comes in at 17 points. So it's really nice and cheap. Um, around about interceptor level, which is fair when you consider a 3 attack dice. Um, it's got one better hull but one less agility and it's a good power skill one ship so nice with the blocking um, always worth talking about the adaptive aileron title when we whenever we look at any of the ships now that come with a zero point non-unique uh, title it's always worth looking at it with the ship right away so we're going to cover that before we look at any of the other stuff as well and it is Adaptive ailerons. Immediately before you reveal your dial, if you are not stressed, you must execute a white one bank straight or bank right maneuver. So if you're not stressed, you must execute a maneuver. So I think we covered this before uh, in a previous video, but it just means that you get an adapt um, an advanced sensors boost that you have to take, but it it's also a manoeuvre, so it can cause you to bump and things like that. So it's pretty interesting, gives you a lot of options. Um, zero points, so I think I'd take it on most guys. There's not many positions where I'd, I think I'd leave it off the ship. But it might come down to play style and a bit more testing on the table. Now, onto a dial. The dial is really good, actually. I really like this. It has... Um, five greens and three reds and it has all of the ones so one hards are white the one banks are green the one forwards is green and it has all of the twos with the two forwards being green it also has a speed two um, signals left and right and also a 2k turn then we come on to a speed three maneuvers it has the three bank and the three forwards and that's the top speed on the dial which isn't actually too bad when you consider that it's going to be able to do a one boost forwards then it goes front to back on its base so if you dial on a three forwards you can actually get up to a five forwards in this thing so whilst it can fly slow if you put the title on it because the minimum it can do is basically a, a three forwards if you uh, ha for a normal ship if you put the title on it it can do some uh, some good stuff if you're playing around so we'll move on to the pilots next so it we didn't actually spoil the other generics but we can extrapolate that the lowest pilot skill named pilot is pilot skill 5 and cost 20 points the generic skill, pilot skill 1, pilot skill 3, and pilot skill 4. Um, so at 17 points, so I'd guess that the pilot skill 3 is going to be 18 points, pilot skill 4 will be 19 points and add in the EPT. And then pilot skill 5 is countdown for 20 points. So same start line, still no EPT, but it does have um, a really, really interesting pilot ability. When defending, if you are not stressed, during the compare results step, you may suffer one damage to cancel all dice results. If you do, receive one stress token. So that's once per combat round, or once per round in general. You can cancel all of the damage you've taken and just take one damage. So with, uh, without any upgrades, it's 20 points. You can survive three shots guaranteed no matter how bad your dice rolls are, how many dice are rolling at you. Fenraid comes in, range 1 with an advanced proton torpedo, uh, takes 7 hits, 7 crits, doesn't matter, just cancel them all, take 1 damage. So, it's really good fun. Things you want to watch out for with this guy is it could bring the stress bot back, anything that's going to apply stress before you shoot, or someone uh, 
to uh, pinging the other full shirt cannon first. Um, it'll be interesting to see if a full shirt cannon actually works, actually, because you need to hit, and uh, I don't believe you would have been hit because none of the dice results go through. So uh, if you put stealth device on this guy, I believe it would stay active. I'm pretty sure because none of them actually hit. So yeah, that's relatively interesting. Um, really like him. We do talk about sticking a whole upgrade on him. It takes him up to 23 points, but what you guaranteed to live for four rounds of combat if you can remain unstressed. Then we have a power skill six for 22 points and he gains the EPT and this is pure Sabak and um, his power ability is when attacking if you have one or fewer damage cards roll one additional attack die so this guy again really punchy now we've had a nice defensive ship this guy is going to be really offensive 22 points for in the opening rounds if you can keep him out of a line of fire he's going to be a four attack dice primary ship so on phantom levels for 22 points um, do some fun stuff like uh, expos on him get him up to like five dice we've got other stuff you can come into as we get further into the article but this guy seems promising definitely going to be target priority number one because he's only two agility and has four hull so if you can punch him into the realms of having two damage cards on him he does become a little a bit less scary but still well worth taking then we have duchess Pilot skill 8 for 23 points and has an EPT and her power ability or his power ability reads while you have a, the adaptive ailerons upgrade card equipped you may choose to ignore its card ability so that's actually a really good um, ability to have when you consider adaptive ailerons so it's a zero point upgrade but it it lets you have all of the options now really strong in my opinion i'm really happy with it you get lots of positional play with this um equally i've heard people talking about or i've thought about putting down duchess with engine upgrade and push and adaptive ailerons and then you're looking at being able to do like four repositioning maneuvers three of which can be done after you've seen where your opponent's going to go if we go before PS8 you can also throw on um, VI move at power skill 10 and position from potentially four different places this is getting up there with like whisper and echo for how tricksy you can be so another really strong pilot I'm really excited to see what people can do with Duchess uh, better players than me are going to be dancing around people quite a lot with this ship so we've already looked at adaptive ailerons, but what else was there in the pack? You get the lightweight frame modification. This is tie only. It costs two points and it reads, when defending, after rolling defense dice, if there are more attack dice than defense dice, roll one additional defense die. You cannot equip this card if your agility value is three or higher. So helps out the tie striker obviously uh, punisher tie bomber um the special forces tie fighter all of these ships are two agility tie fighters and um yeah, pretty promising lets you bump in an extra defense die if there's more attack dice so if you're going against primary three attack dice ships or um anyone who's got um the HLC stuff like that you're gonna throw in an extra defense die basically it's good work pardon me it's an, a good card two points is competitive for the modification slot um, no one who can take it is probably going to be wanting auto thrusters it competes with um, tie engine mark 2 um, I think it's better than stealth device on ships that can take this um, even if it was PS um, Agility 3 I think Stealth Device would then be better because you'd be rolling 4 dice all the time until you take the hit but no I think this is a really good card um, I don't think it's an auto include by any means it's, the ability to keep these ships really cheap 
is quite promising. So I don't think it's def going to be an auto include, but definitely competitive. I would like to see it on um, the, the quick draw build I'm going to be messing around with later. Uh, just trying to make her a little bit more defensive. It could be interesting on the special forces tie. And also maybe on the punisher. Uh, just bumping it from one agility to two could be worth a two point investment. Because it's going to trigger on almost every attack. So it could be really good. And also... It doesn't actually reference evades, which add in the dice result later. So anything that can take an evade and has a relatively low agility could start benefiting from this. Then the gravy card from the pack, one that most people are excited about, is the new unique um, elite pilot talent, Swarm Leader. So this is three points and it reads rather complex, but it reads when performing a primary weapon attack, choose up to two other friendly ships that have the defender inside their firing arc at range one to three. Remove one evade token from each chosen ship to roll one additional attack die for each token removed. So we'll get in the example here, assuming that um, you're running a free ship list, probably. Um, one thing I've been messing around with is um, trying to get some Duke to work with this card. So you want um, ships that have got a higher pilot skill than the person who has this card with Duke, so that they'll get their shots in with their evade token. They'll be forcing them to take extra damage or spend the focus token. Then, if we go back to looking at, uh, where is it, um, Pure Sabak. So you can put this card on Pure Sabak, and he's power skill 6, so he will be rolling potentially 7 attack dice if you're at range 1. So you can strip tokens or do guaranteed damage and then hit them for a 7 attack dice attack. And you can do this reliably. It isn't like um, firing like Fenrail with the uh, advanced proton torpedoes or um, Miranda when she gets to launch ordnance and stuff like that. This can reliably happen if you're good enough to keep the people in arc with one ship. So it does rely on the other ships actually having the target in arc. No, no range restrictions on you where you are so you can be coming from all three different angles and still get the bonuses all you need is for the ship you're removing the evade token from to have the target in arc at range one to three so pretty strong i think the ones i've been messing around with have been um trying to get um swarm leader onto vessery so that um you can get his shot and then something like a duking Darth Vader, and then another ship who can take Duke. I think you've got 29 points left, so like, you could do a Countess um, with Duke and uh, adaptive ailerons and stuff like that, and still have points left over. And uh, I was actually tempted by doing a Colonel Vessery with Ty D, so that he becomes a giant target now. But that means that people are then ignoring Vader. I mean, you could go pure Savak as well, because he's in a four attack die ship. So that's probably a better way of doing it. Um, take Duke and um, get your evade. But it's pretty interesting how you can, like, you could potentially get Vader's shot in, uh, put some damage down, then you'll have pure Savak take his shot. Um, Duke someone down again, then you have uh, Vessery shot with a tractor beam to reduce the agility and uh, uh, now we're at the point where if they were saving their um, focus token for defence against this it's another reason why they have to take the focus token off now rather than waiting for you to hit them because Vessery is then going to get to punch them with maybe a 5 dice primary attack at range 2 to 3 range 1 it's a 6 dice primary attack and you've got Vessery's ability kicking in all the time as well so I think that's a pretty nasty combo if you can pull it off it's up there with like the ruthless Vessery combo for 
how much work you've got to put into making it work, but it just shows how much potential this card has. And that's just looking at it from an Imperial side. Uh, it it can go on other stuff as well. Like you could be stealing uh, stealing stuff off of air wings. You can uh, have um, Tycho flying with this, something stupid like that. There's lots of things you can do here to make Swarm Weeder work. I'm looking forward to seeing it on some um, Scum Swarm, seeing what these Scum ships can do. Especially when you consider like Manoru can be passing stuff, so it's going to be a fully modified... Uh, Fenro doing something like this, he, he's going to be scurry. Having... Um, what would that be? Four attack dice normally, up to five. Six, seven, Manoru can be passing all of the um, target lock focus to him. So, really, p potential to wreck people with this. It's pretty good fun. Um, that's all of the upgrades that I can make out and that we've spoiled. I didn't cover anything that we already know about. Um, I just general reprinted upgrades. But, um, all in all, I think this is actually a really exciting pack. I'm going to. I've got myself down for two packs uh, already because um, I feel like there's potential to abuse some of the lower pilot skills or at least fly two of them. I wouldn't be surprised if um, three or four uh, would still be useful but for now because of the um, EPT only being a one of and um, the only other one I'd want multiples of would be lightweight frame so definitely getting two i might go up to three or four after i've played it a little bit but in summary really strong dial especially when you consider it in combination with the adaptive ailerons a solid start line for a really competitive price point so it's going to be a good ship Get definitely going to see some play um it might not work in uh, a palpaces style of meta but, you know, at some point the meta is going to need to move on from Palpaces anyway. And this could be the ship that helps push Imperials into a different playstyle. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Um, I do have like, a Patreon page where people can help support the uh, stuff I'm putting out. So feel free to have a look at that. It is um, just Patreon uh, Dice Hate. So if you can find, uh, just Google it, it'll come up. But I don't, like, even just a, a dollar um, a month does help. But the most important thing you can do if you want to help the channel is just share the videos and make sure you're liking and share it. And just get the word out there a little bit more. I was really hoping to try and hit a 1,000 subscribers before uh, the new year. And I'm at nearly 300, uh, sorry, nearly 750 now. It's grown quite a lot over the last month, so... That's really good to see, so thanks everyone who's been enjoying these reviews. I do try and get them out. I mean, um, I must be the fastest person having these reviews out there. I don't get any advance notice from FFG that they're coming out or anything like that. I just have to check every day and try and make a video as quick as I can. All the people who do like the Imperial Assault and Armada, I know I've been uh, slacking a little bit on Armada. I'll try and get those videos up again soon. But in honesty, it's just I've not been able to play much, so I don't know how valid my opinion is. But if you want to see rundowns of them, throw it in the comments. Let me know what other game systems you want me to do this type of coverage on as well. Thanks everyone. Bye.